The last time I made a video talking about tyrannosaurs was for the Nano Tyrannus paper that reinstated it. And this time I'm back and also talking about things I heard rumors about at the Society of River Paleontology, in this case a potential new species of Tyrannosaurus. When we think about species, we need to think about the step above a species, a genus. And so for example, you can pick the genus Panthera, of which there's many species. For example, you can look at Panthera leo, the lion, and Panthera tigris, the tiger. And this is the same kind of thing within the genus Tyrannosaurus, where now there's a new one, not just Tyrannosaurus rex, but now there's Tyrannosaurus macrayensis, which is named after the macray formation where it was found. This specimen isn't super complete, and while it was originally assigned to Tyrannosaurus by Dave Gillette at the Museum of Northern Arizona who found the specimen, that hasn't always been accepted and some people went, no, it might be a new genus. And this paper finds kind of a middle ground. It's Tyrannosaurus, but not Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, I know a lot of people are going to jump to a paper a few years ago that came out and said, hey, no, there's three species of Tyrannosaurus. And that one had a lot of issues in that paper as far as just knowing how old different specimens were, but also very importantly, using characteristics to distinguish them that were very variable. So just, just hey, this tooth is slightly rotated. Things like that are pretty variable by a single species. So that doesn't really help in this particular case. But this paper does a lot of things better. And that includes by things with stratigraphy first. And that's notable because they were able to find the site and find a tuff bed that had already been dated below it. Tuff is made up of volcanic ash, and so that means when the magma explodes, some of the different gases and different material that gets launched into the air would have cooled essentially at that eruption. And that means you can shoot lasers at it and tell how old that eruption was more or less. Using uranium lead dating, it was shown that this tuff is actually 73.2 million years old which would put this animal that was still 33 meters above that tuff bed at still probably five to six million years older than Tyrannosaurus rex, which is a pretty good amount of time. One of the hard questions to ask though is what is its precise age? And that's largely because that's still 33 meters of rock deposition that happened before this Tyrannosaurus rex died and got washed into this creek and was able to actually get preserved. Now, 33 meters might sound like a lot, it's not a ton, so it still does seem likely that it was older than Tyrannosaurus rex. But there was also the looks at the bone that helped to distinguish that it is potentially its own species, where again, they looked at more varied characteristics that aren't as likely to change over the course of variation within just a single species. These include many different characteristics, such as the post-orbital bone having a low, rearly positioned process coming off of it, Postorbital bone also has an anteriorly or front projecting prefrontal or frontal articular surfaces, which essentially just means where it connects with the frontal and prefrontal bones is further forward. The squamosal bone also has a ventrally projecting quadratojugal process, as well as having a concave medial margin. There's also a strong ridge bounding the front margin of the squamosal bone, and specifically around the ventral, so the bottom part of the pneumatic fossa, which is a depression in the bone that helped let more air into the bone so that it could lighten the skull. The dentary is also very shallow towards the rear end of it, and it has a convex portion of it near the back and the bottom side of it, which is different than what you see in Tyrannosaurus rex. There's a number of other characteristics they also bring up, but at least you can hopefully fairly easily see, these aren't just as simple as, well, this tooth is rotated a little bit, like it was in the previous There's Multiple Species of Tyrannosaurus paper. This is also very interesting because there's been rumors of another large tyrannosaur coming from the southern part of the United States. And this one's from New Mexico, the other one though is from Texas, and it's been nicknamed Alamosaurus, although that's not official yet because they haven't published on it yet. However, I also know from being at the Society of River Paleontology that there are people working on that, and they think it might also be a new species. So hopefully those teams will work together and figure out what's going on with the southernmost of the Tyrannosaurus specimens, so you can actually understand what's happening within this genus. If it is its own species, though, it does help to answer a little bit about how Tyrannosaurus rex may have actually evolved. And that's largely because when we're looking at the Cretaceous of North America, there's a few different Tyrannosaurs that actually lived throughout the continent throughout that time. And many of them were around for a long time, such as Albertosaurus, where there's a lot of different places where we found it. Meanwhile, Tyrannosaurus rex just kind of shows up out of nowhere in North America, and most of its closest relatives are from Asia with things such as Tarbosaurus and also Zuchang Tyrannus. This initial part of the data then would suggest that potentially the Tyrannosaur line that would lead to Tyrannosaurus actually migrated back into Asia along with where the origination of the Tyrannosaurus was 
and then they eventually just kind of migrated back into North America, and that's why we very suddenly, at the end of the Cretaceous, have Tyrannosaurus rex while none of its relatives are actually North America. If this isn't the case, though, and this animal is its own thing, it seems likely that actually the southern part of Laramidia, which would become North America, actually is where the Tyrannosaurus started to get really, really large, and then they migrated northwards and back into Asia. This is also really important because things like Tarbosaurus are believed to be a little bit older than Tyrannosaurus rex, and that's been a really big sticking point for, actually no, Tyrannosaurus rex came from Asia in a secondary wave of Tyrannosaur migration into North America. I will still say there's some oddities about this. First of all, the fossil is very partial, and some researchers have already said it's not diagnostic. You can't tell anything about it because it's too partial. Again, I'd like to see them work with the group in Texas to see if they have the same animal and maybe understand a little bit more about their evolution. But also just looking at the phylogeny, there's one strange standout here, which is Nanotyrannus isn't anywhere in it, and one of these authors is the same person from the Nanotyrannus paper. So what's going on? Why are they not including that in this data set? The phylogeny also shows Displetosaurus as being not all grouped together, at least not as closely as you would expect. And this potentially means that they just have a weird data set, or maybe Displetosaurus is also just not that closely related. Although, from most research that I've seen recently, we have a fairly good understanding about Displetosaurus monophyly, essentially that they're all together in a single group. 